Um, this is part two of the story that's in the new run. Um, it originally appeared in Saul's zine. This is not where I belong. Um, so thanks to him for inspiring uh, the story. Um, but do go back, re read the one in this is issue of the runt, and then track down Saul's zine and read the other two. Um, so this is my scientifically spurious um, science fiction epic that I've been working on for a while. Um, it takes place on a, a ship called Floating Hell. Um, so this episode is called The War on Slugs. We're in the interstellar freight business. We lump objects of bone-crushing heaviness across distances incomprehensible to the human brain. Last time I visited Earth, they were calling us space proles. Nobody knows the real name of the starship the paint having been burned from the hull after so many entries and re-entries into numerous types of atmosphere. We call it floating hell after a line in an old song. Irish, of course. There's a communication problem on this starship, says Doran after our shift. She's just spent an hour forklifting pallets for a drop-off on a planet that we're not dropping off at for another two planets. The route being changed due to finding intelligent, sentient life on the planet Sea Green. She has a point, but I'm not going to let on that she does. I've no idea what you're talking about, I say. I can hear you perfectly clear. She, take, she fakes giving me a dead arm and I flinch, even though we go through the charade at least ten times a day. We're on our way to the commissary near the warehouse, the one place where you can guarantee the food will be fresh. There seems to be a slug problem aboard floating hell, possibly because of one of the predators in the habitat either isn't doing its job or is diminished in population. Where do you pick up a fresh stock of hedgehogs in deep space? <laughs> we reported it to Coughlin, our line manager, days ago, but we've still not heard anything back. We step over a particularly odious looking specimen on our way through the door, white to the point of translucence and sneezing along at a fair old pace. They've developed a fondness for the contents of the salad bowls that have appeared over the last couple of weeks. Ship administration seemingly concerned all of a sudden that we get our greens. As we take our seats, I notice a slug on the floor nearby, sliming up a lettuce leaf that has fallen from someone's plate, probably two days ago. Why is this place, place never cleaned up, says Doran. It's disgusting. And she picks up the leaf with its gastropod passenger still attached and tosses it across the room. I can't eat with them around, she says. They make my stomach turn. Interesting you should say that, I say, because they're basically a walking stomach. Did you know their Latin name means stomach foot? Doran scales. Next you'll be telling me the difference between a slug and a snail again. I'll go back to my spice burger. I don't get paid for this. We mastigate for a moment and then Doran says, Why do we have to bring slugs on board anyway? Is it because of that terror thing? Doran had an aversion to saying the word terraforming for some reason. I don't know why. It's not a difficult word to say. I tell her yes. The obligation of every interstellar craft, whether commercial, private, government or military, is to take along an agreed percentage of flora, fauna, etc. in the event of locating a suitable seeding planet. Later that day I get a call from Coughlin. The word finally got through about the slugs, but he wants me and Doran on the team trimming the population in the habitat. I protest that it's not my job, but he just says, hey, whoever smelt it, dealt it. I ask if he's just farted, and he hangs up the vid screen. <laughs> he was never very good at finding appropriate phrases for real-time events. I'm in the process of trying to get in touch with our ever-elusive shop steward to protest at what we're being asked to do, when Dawn shows up in pink gardening boots, holding a shovel with a massive grin on her face. I say, fashion victim, and then think, maybe just this once. After all, it might be more fun than lifting things. The habitat is 1,500 acres of forest and parkland at the stern of floating hell that contains all the flora and fauna needed to begin the population of a livable planet. Myself and Doran make contact with a ranger, Dodson, a physically imposing man who is so soft-spoken that you have to lean into him to hear what he's saying. He shields his eyes from the artificial sun and tells us, I was hired to cook grass, but they promoted me. Apart from putting coffee grounds around the plants, I don't know anything about slugs or snails. Is, is that what they are? Snails are the ones with a house on their back, I say. And then Doran starts taking the piss. 
doing a fairly, de fairly decent impression of me blabbing on about my favourite subject, Irish cultural identity. She says, snails are like the Irish, carrying her home with us wherever we go, with our spice burgers and our trad funk and our obsession with the past. We are the snails of history, blah, blah, blah. The ranger says, I'd never thought of it like that. And I give Dor Dora a victory glance. The ranger gives us each a pair of gloves and a plastic container and we start collecting slugs. He volunteers to take care of their disposal. His orders are to eject them through the sphincter portals dotted around the windows of the habitat. A sphincter portal is basically an airlock, but without the airs and graces. No spinning stainless steel wheel for a door handle. No annoying alarms, no ostentatious android voice counting down to depressurization. They're basically a circular opening into a space of about 12 centimeters in diameter, covered with a clear skin-like membrane on both the ship and its base side. This membrane won't allow human skin to penetrate it, but it will bend when pressure is applied. But if an object, or in this case, a creature, is placed against it, it will relent and allow access to the airlock below, beyond. Once the object is between the membranes, all the operator has to do is push it through the outer membrane and into outer space. In the habitat, they use them to get rid of grass cuttings and dead wood and the like. After an hour of collecting, we, begin, we bring our haul to Dodson, and he begins shoving them out of the portal, nonchalantly forcing them out one by one, as if he's really enjoying himself. Each one wriggles momentarily in the null space between the ship and the outside void, separated from the soil and wondering, what next? Absent-mindedly, the ranger says, they used to live in the sea, you know. They look so alien to me that they might look at home anywhere. Doran just says, ugh, when I explain the hole that they breathe through. When I, I explain that they breathe through, through, the hole that they breathe through is in the side of their head. Sorry. I try to look for it. But all, all at once they're drifting away from floating hell, lost forever. Hey Doran, you know if you told a slug to go fuck itself, it wouldn't be an insult. <laughs> On the way to work the next day, Coughlin intercepts me. He's pushing a trolley full of salad bowls. Hey, Coakley, any chance you could do me a favor? The Sully of Sea Green are complaining that there's no salad in Commissary 17. Will you drop these up there? It's typical. Once you do one job that isn't your job in your job description, you get all sorts of shit th thrown at you. But can they not do it themselves? It's not as if any of them are that busy going to the odd diplomatic meeting here and there. Besides, I've never seen any of them in our commissary. Coughlin says, well, apparently they've been using number seven for the past two weeks. In fact, I wanted to ask you about an incident that one of them reported a few days ago. Will you drop by my office uh, a half hour before swipe time? I'll take them, I say, snatching the handle of the trolley and nudging him out of the way. But do me a favour and tell the warehouse lads I'll be a bit late. Coughlin walks towards his office, evidently surprised at not being given more of a fight. On the way to the commissary, I stop by a terminal and lock myself in. I search the image database for a picture of a solly of sea green, and there they are, a white slug-like entity with eyes on stalks that emits a slimy trail in its wake. Similar appearance, in appearance to the slugs found on Earth, but absolutely and positively sentient. After work, I arrive in Coughlin's office, Doran already there spilling the beans. Our new Solian friend is, is perched on Coughlin's desk, humbly accepting her apology through the translator. Coughlin clocks me at the door. I won't be needing you now, Kevin. I make my exit. Later, Doran insists on going to Commissary 10 so as to avoid bumping into any Solly. She doesn't eat, just sips a coffee and stares out at the void. So all that, that time in the canteen that I was talking about how disgusting they were, I was being a racist. Her face sours at the idea, and then more realization. Oh my God, I flung that one across the room. Well, Doran, I say, it's like I've been saying all this time, there's a serious communication problem aboard this starship. The resulting dead arm is real. Thank you.